Uh, so, as mentioned, I am at Skull Focus on my laptop. That was good. Oh, okay. That was yeah, there we go. That screen. Come on. Should be like that. Got a technical difficulty here. He's trying to do something. There we go. All right. This is me, Andy Cowell. Uh, I am uh, currently AWS Solutions Architect for East Tennessee Enterprises. I've been with AWS for about uh, almost three years. Um, previous to that, I did a lot of different things. I've been a full time developer, I was a wizard at UT, which that's uh, where I kind of learned system administration. Go uh, lab staff. Do what? Go lab staff. Right. Right. Uh, learned a lot of That's some of the staff. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, I uh, worked at a local ISP, Internet Design Group back in the day. We hosted Metallica.com and Metallica Suit Napster. And we were the targets of one of the first really big distributed denial of service attacks, which pretty much shut our company down. And, I had the honor of taking their server to them and say, I, I can't, I can't host this. Uh, anyway, so that is me. Um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about uh, Mastodon, right? Activity Pub, which is a technology that supports uh, Mastodon. And the Fediverse, right? Which we'll talk about is a lot of the, the different services that are connected to Activity Pub, right? But I'm not going to dive into the technology stuff first, right? This is not uh, this is not really like 30 years of experience with Activity Pub. This is like three months of curiosity, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, you know, how I discovered Mastodon because I think it is uh, useful to see kind of how it works from a user perspective before we really kind of dive into the technical details. All right. It's just the way that yeah. you do it. Oh, okay, could be. Um, <clears throat> so, henceforth, all good stories. We'll start with the coronavirus, right? Um, coming out of lockdown, uh, even though you know, my family wasn't personally impacted the way a lot of people were during you know, COVID, you know, all I had to change, you know, a lot of things have changed. And, uh, you know, I started trying to sort of intentionally cultivate some of the habits uh, that I lost, right? In my mind, I, I changed jobs, I'm working from home, lockdown, yada, yada, right? So I started trying to like, okay, you know, what, what do I not do anymore that I used to do, right? And uh, I have been a gamer for longer than I have been in IT, and I've been in IT a long time, right? <clears throat> so one of the things that really uh, dipped off for me was like, you know, painting toy soldiers. I, I paint little miniatures, like these are for the Pathfinder role playing game. I painted those. Also, do a lot of historicals. Here is a D Day. Uh, I should say D Day, but normal. Like Beyond the Beaches Battle. Uh, we've got mm -hmm. some, uh, I guess, the, up the top left, you can see some Germans coming in and a lot of paratroopers in the Bocage there and some. Uh, armored cars coming down the road, right? <clears throat> so this this is pretty much dropped off for years, and I decided I was going to get back into it, right? <clears throat> Look, a lot of time had passed, and I was kind of out of the loop on a lot of things. Like 3D printing is huge now in miniatures, right? And like I'm out of the loop, and the question is like, where do I, where's my community now? Like, where's my online community, right? For most of my life, it was the miniatures page, uh, which is, is a great site. Uh, you can probably tell it's not super high tech. Got some bugs. I offered to help the guy out with his bugs. He showed me a bash script for CGI that was running his website. Uh, oh. Caleb might like that, but I didn't like that. I was like, oh my God, what am I getting into? Right. <laughs> But that, that was my community. And I mean, not just over COVID, but over time, uh, more and more fragmentation occurred in the community. Like people went to Facebook or they went to Twitter or they went to Yahoo groups, which then kind of died. And a few people still in groups.io, but you know, 
people are kind of everywhere now. So I'm looking for my community. I kind of settled on Discord, right? There's, uh, it's a usable chat service, kind of like IRC, right? Uh, but the problem is, it's like I'm on you know 15, 20 Discords, and you know the topics are kind of all hidden away in the channels, right? One of the things I liked about the miniatures page, I didn't know it at the time, but but I had actually had an activity feed because. Every post anybody made would show up on the front page, and you can kind of quickly scroll down and see anything that was interesting and then zoom in. So I, I was kind of, I didn't realize it then, but I was kind of missing that feed like behavior, right? But uh, I did, you know, I did, I did enjoy Discord, still on Discord, right? Uh, and then Elon Musk buys Twitter, right? Um, so obviously, you know, we kind of saw what a cluster uh, that has been. And it got me thinking about Mastodon. I already knew about Mastodon, but I really had no interest. I'm not a big social media person. I like to think about Facebook or Twitter. Uh, you know, I was looking for my smaller community, right? Uh, so this got me thinking, all right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go check out Mastodon, right? What, what, what is this? I, mean, I, I do have a Twitter account. Maybe I need a Mastodon account. I'll go check it out, right? <laughs> All right, yeah, right. Everybody, every, you got the hashtag Twitter migration. Of course, everybody's leaving Twitter and going to Mastodon now. Uh, so the first, the first Mastodon server I found, uh, you know, I, I kind of realized they say like you, you need to find a Mastodon server for you. Like it's not like a single destination like Twitter. It's more like I'm running a server. And I'm trying to get Knoxville people into it, so it's Knoxville.social or whatever, right? So I found a dice.camp, right, which is for role players, right? So I'm, I'm role playing. I thought, okay, maybe this would be a good place for me. I, I created an account, kind of hung out there for a little bit, figuring it out, right? Uh, and then I found, oh, wargamers.social, a little bit closer to what I was looking for, right? Uh, so I, made an account on wargamers.social and actually started uh, you know, posting and like being a little member of the community, right? So over here on the left, you see this is administered by Pete. Pete's a great guy, by the way. Uh, uh, but Pete says, hey, uh, just an FYI, if miniatures, like pain toy soldiers is your thing, check out this instance run by the uh, Wargames Soldiers and Strategy magazine, the Mastodon instance, right? Targeting miniatures gamers. I'm like, hey, awesome, right? That's that's really where I need to be, right? So I learned how to move my account from Dice.camp over to um, uh, Mastodon the, the, the WSS, whatever, right? I don't know what to call it. I call it the w, WSS Mastodon server, right? Didn't lose any, I didn't have a lot of followers, but I didn't lose any followers because I kind of redirected the dice.camp over to the WSS server. But ah, you know what? That's pretty cool. Right? <coughs> Set up that redirection. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I, I, I found my home. I found my place I want to be, right? Uh, now what? Right? So I, I mentioned kind of having that V. Uh, let's see here. Mastodon's got three feeds, right? So think of think that WSS server. This you know you can think of it conceptually as a single server. I don't know what it is, right? But conceptually, it's a single server. It's got a local feed, right? So I can go to the local feed and I can just see everything anybody in the server has posted, right? So I'm really browsing all these miniature related posts. You know, sometimes people are doing other things, but. I, I, if I don't know who to follow, I can go to the local feed and I can just see kind of that local community, right? If I start following people, I can go to the home feed, right? So that's just the, the people I follow. And then there's the federated feed. So it turns out, like if we go, we go back here and we go and look at uh, dice.camp, right? That's, that's, Robert Laws, he's got an account on Dice.camp. Like, I, I want to follow him. Right? 
but I don't have to be on Dicestop Camp to follow him, right? I, I can get on my WSS server and follow him from there. At that point, because I'm following him, all his posts come to the WSS server and it shows up in the federated feed. So the federated feed is all the posts from anybody on the server who they're following that are off the server. Right, so in that way, you know, you start to get sort of your just larger random assortment of content, right? I, I'm on a board game server, a lot of like uh, Ukraine news about what's going on in Ukraine, the, the battles and all that. Uh, a little bit of politics, not too much, you know, but you can kind of start to see like, oh, this is kind of the things this community is interested in largely outside of our community. But also, I'm pulling in the dice stock, some of the dice stock camp RPG stuff, some of the war games that social, hex and chip stuff. Uh, there's a, you know, if you're familiar with Warhammer, it's the biggest miniatures game that got there on the server. Some of those people are in there. I see the ones I like, I follow them. Starts to start to feel a little bit more like that social media experience. Yes. Yes. You might cover this later. Do you have to give the credentials to the dice? There, your credentials that you use on dice to the war gamers mm -hmm. so I can federate. Yeah. So what you do is, you know, I go to the destination server and I say, hey, you're going to uh, you're, you're going to be receiving a uh, a redirect from this other server. And then I go to the other server, log in, authenticate, and I say, hey, I want you to redirect over there. It sees that I've already set it up, and it does it. Okay, thank you. Do you have the chain of redirects? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I, I that, that may be assumption. Uh, I'm not sure. There's a limit to the amount of a client will follow. So the recommendation is if you're going to like, to like go through, I think it's I think it's like 10, it might be five. I think the spec actually doesn't define it. But I, the recommendation I've heard is you use separate credentials on each one and you can still log into servers you left to the point yes. redirect. And so as you say move to server three, you have server one and two point server three directly. Yeah and then uh, I don't I don't know my slide over that. We'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about more, more about that, but I can show you right quick what this looks like. All right, uh, so we just go to that website, right? Mastodon, WSS Magazine. This is the default web interface, right? It's got an API. There's tons of third-party clients, right? Uh, this is a little bit of an advanced view. You may not see exactly this when you go and log in. Uh, but there's all sorts of websites that I want to do and I, I found it, right? Uh, so you can see here, I've got my home feed uh, and a second column, right? I got notifications in the third column and then I've got more stuff over here on the right, right? So uh, at, the, the, at the top, the discover section, you can see the local timeline and the federated timeline, right? <laughs> so if I go to the local timeline, over here, these are all the people on the server, and you see all these nicely painted miniatures. Uh, and you can see here, somebody replied to me, I think, this may be my posts. Um, federated timeline, uh, you start to see like, here's tech.lgbt, dice.camp, sauropods.win. <laughs> yeah, like all sorts of stuff out there, right? And, and that's when we talk about the the federation between the servers. That's really what we're talking about. It, it is, uh, I don't I don't want to say it's, it, it, the, none of these are out there. They're all chronological, right? So it's not the, the business trying to capture your attention to sell you advertising. Like that just doesn't exist. Now, there are people developing algorithmic things for it, but you kind of have to you know, jump through hoops to get access to that. Like you have to really want it and set it up. Right? Again, it's got an API, so you can kind of do whatever you want with your client. Uh, but fundamentally, it's all chronological. It's all people that you have in. Maybe not every single person you can intentionally follow, but it, it is more intentional than, than like Twitter, where it's just everybody in one big pot. And, uh, you know, honestly, uh, I'm not super interested in a lot of the Ukraine stuff. 
So I, I went through and blocked like some of those news sites. Like, I, don't, I don't see any posts from this server. And they're going from my federated feed. Dogs. Do what? Parents have been Oh, how so? Oh, hey. <laughs> ah, yes, there we go. Somebody from DEF CON, not social, just, uh, I guess, sent me a direct message. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And I can come over here and follow him back, but I'm not going to yet. <laughs> not going to yet, uh, because uh, there is more to come. Let me check my slides right quick, see where I'm at. Yes, okay. So here's here's sort of the uh, certain instances I went through. Dice like camp, we're that social mass. All right, like I'm a big nerd. I don't necessarily want to advertise that to the world, right? So I go to AWS community social. It's a fantastic picture. And I've got an account on AWS community social. But there's no relation between that. And they're both BT 102, right? I'm BT 102 in both places. But there's no association between the two servers. There's no association between who I follow between the two servers. Like if I go to the WSS server, I'm in my nerd community. I'm in nerd mode. I don't see like technical stuff coming in. It's just like all the stuff I want to see. And when I want to go to tech nerd mode, I go over to AWS community, right? So now uh, if we go back over here, right, I can take uh, Aaron's URL here. Come back over here, search for it, right? And I can follow him here. As far as I know, Aaron doesn't play miniatures, he doesn't paint, uh, doesn't paint miniatures, right? So I know him through the technical community. I want him to be part of my technical space. After I see his posts, I may move it, I may unprint him, you know, who knows, right? Can you ever consolidate down your accounts in the future? Or is this a, if I made a choice? And no, no, I mean, you, so one thing to remember here is we're entirely talking about mass time. Like, we got to activity pub. Activity pub's going to enable this federation, but a lot of these features are Mastodon specific, right? Uh, and Mastodon itself, uh, let's see here. If I go into settings, <clears throat> I can import and export all my data, all my followers, everybody I'm following. So it would, I think it'd be very feasible. But I, I think it's set up like move instances. Like if I want to completely move my existence from one server to another, uh, I can you know, request an archive, I can get a backup of all my content, all my followers, everything I'm following. I can just go to the next Mastodon server, upload it there, and away we go. There's a few limitations too that I run into is that um, most instances will only allow you to send your followers to an account every 30 days. Mm -hmm. If you send your followers to a server that is misconfigured, um, you might just lose those followers. Yeah. Um, yeah, I ran into that too. The documentation for the servers. To get some of these screenshots, I went back to dice.camp, broke my redirect. You know, fortunately, I already had screenshots of redirect, broke it, took pictures about the Redirect. Oh, I can't put it back because I'm in cool down for 30 days. So there, there's there's some little things like that. I may have prevents hijacking. But the receiving account has to declare itself as an alias of the sending account before the sending account. All right. So Jonathan's got a question. I see boosted posts. All right, yeah, I'm kind of ignoring like the some of the social aspects here. Um, but if we come in here, um, you know, you, you've got the option on these public posts, right? If I boost a post, it shows up in my feed, right? Anybody who's following me will see the post I boosted. 
So that's, I, I guess that's like a lot of work. Not each week. Yeah, yeah. You're you retweeting tweeting on that. Although I think, I think that the, the guy who wrote the software says the worst decision I ever made. I think they're trying to change terminology. Yeah, that's but yes, why am I use two use label two? These are toots. Um, you know, it comes out of the front of the uh, elephant and the back. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, and then there's a, the little star, which is a favorite. So the favorite doesn't put it in your feed. It just lets the poster know that you liked it. Right? And then <laughs> the one on the right so is a bookmark. You can bookmark something to save it and go back to it. Are the boosted point? Uh, anyone can boost, right? Yeah, this, you know, this is not, you know, it's somebody on Dice.camp Camp who's following me may boost my post, right? Some of that's just out of my control. What's going on on the server, right? It, it is interesting to think, like, how could I use the system, right? Because you, you can't go to like Twitter and have them, if you're a company and you want to spread your message out everywhere. You can't go to Twitter and buy advertising and force it into the speed, right? What you could do is kind of strategically map out some of the federation from bigger servers, create accounts on all of them, post the same thing everywhere. And it might that's a, uh, I'm not sure. Okay. If I'm on a search and I do some posts, and someone who is on two different servers reads that, can you chain can you chain boost accidentally? So that might discover someone's on an LGBT server by boosting it here that boosts that puts it here. Uh, no, because uh, we'll, we'll dig into the protocol a little bit. Like the original content is identified, like you're blocking that server, you won't show up. Uh, again, I'm not an expert on this, that's my understanding. So if say server A originates content, a user on server B boosts it, you're on server C. If you are blocking a domain block on either server A or server B, you won't see it. If you're blocking server A, you won't see it because it originated from server A. If you block from server B, you won't see it because the boost never got to you. And but say if you block B only but not A, and it comes through some other path, maybe you follow the user directly or someone on server D, you do follow the boost. Too. Because boosts only shows some your quality. I, I just want to make sure that my juggalo friends don't see that I'm a pro. Yes. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> two different Two different things here on two different screens. Don't see your other self. Remember what a cat con. Every native client I've seen supports running multiple accounts. Okay, cool. I was just yeah, exactly. A lot of the, uh, the, the not the most, not the Desktop apps, the mobile apps, they go with button switch accounts. Uh, yeah. And you'll see if you're using the desktop app, like if you put, put the link to an to something that's from an original server, you'll actually get a link to that server. server, server yes. version of that. So, so the interesting thing is, like, if, uh, all right, so I get on WSS, I follow Robin Walls from Dice.com. If I'm the first person to follow him, he doesn't show up in the federated feed. Because he hasn't been federated and he hasn't posted anything yet, right? So my server's got no content from it. The next time he posts, because I'm following him, it will get pushed to my server. And at that point, it'll show up in the federated feed. And if somebody on my server wants to say, oh, like, I want to see all of his posts, they'll say, like, hey, older posts don't show up. Click here and it sends them over to Dice.camp and they can see the whole thing. So it's this webhooks between servers and then so I'm going to it. Uh, it. Yeah. I mean data data duplication. I mean that, yeah. Okay. At least you you're gonna get kicked out of this. Well it it greatly was in the movie. Oh boy, I mean secret global marketing. You know what? All right, see now we're gonna <laughs> be <laughs> in the which is uh, I think a networking protocol. Uh, which underlies uh, everything we've been talking about. Right? Activity Pub is a standard. It's a W3C standard. Like the same people that uh, do you know, HTTP. Right? So 
it, it is a it is a standard. There's a working working body working on the standard. All right. You can go read exactly how this works. And it kind of works like this, right? Uh, so an actor, which is my account on one server, right? So the, the reason I'm able to have these two separate accounts on two different servers is because I'm two different actors, right? So I'm really, uh, if I post, or maybe, maybe we, well, whatever. If I post, it goes to my outbox. And there's there's kind of two things that can happen there, right? If anybody wants to browse my posts, essentially they can browse my outbox, right? But as things enter the outbox, I've got kind of a mailing list of my followers, and then my server pushes it out to all their servers, very similar to email. In the same way, you know, direct messages and other published messages can come into me through my inbox. So it's a pub sub model. It is, yeah. yes. <clears throat> All right. So as you dig into activity pub, you're going to run into very quickly paragraph four activity streams. Well, what is activity streams? Activity streams is also a W3C standard. Um, yeah, activity streams, activity streams, there's a logic to it. Activity stream is to activity pub as maybe HTML is to HTTP. Right? Activity pub defines the communication. But activity streams is the format of the content of being sent around. Also a W3C standard. <laughs> yes. So oh, I'm trying to understand activity club versus activity streams, you would think this would be for chat GPT with itself. Like it's a public, and it's a published standard, right? This is largely objective. So let's see what ChatGPT says, right? What's the difference between activity pub and activity streams, right? Activity pub is a, de a decentralized social networking protocol based on activity streams, right? Activity streams provides the common language. On the other hand, activity pub is a protocol to enable communication and collaboration, right? In summary, Activity streams is a data format for describing social activity, but it has social verbs like follow or I don't know the verb, retweet, retweet, repost, whatever. Uh, and it understands objects like posts, right? And while Activity Pub is a protocol for decentralized social networking based on activity streams. So, hey, I think that's a pretty good answer. Ben's editor mode is probably quite angry that <laughs> next time. And one of my favorite things is ask it to explain it in like format and musical, like oh, that yes, story yes, or something. That, that. Or as a poem. So it does So, I, so I, you know, here's the thing. We're gonna we're gonna dig into this a little more. But all this runs over 443 on HTTPS. Yeah. It's, right? Well, multiple multiple. I know the answers there, but multiple protocols like Skim and uh, Sandwich, for example. Are all protocols and all the protocol. You're just using it. Yes, it's trying to do it. uses a well known path. Yeah, well, 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 well I think, I mean, so, so, like, the, well, well let's, let's go through this, right? Because these are all questions I've, I've, I've pondered, right? Yes, Activity Pub is considered a protocol um, and uses HTTPS for the underlying transport mechanism. The Activity Pub specification. Defines the message format. Something like a meta what? Something like a meta Coming on top of something else. It's just a data standard. It, it is. I mean, is. So, how about this? About so, uh, yeah. so, this was a long answer. So, my question was if Activity Pub is a network protocol, 
quantum layer of the yeah, OSI yeah. seven layer stack does it reside at? On the presentation, so layer seven, right? So close. Yeah, but ChatGPT says that uses HTTP as the transport layer, and HTTPS is dropped layer four. Yeah. So, so either I've got two layer seven protocols, or I've got two layer four protocols. It's that HTTPS when it really meant TLS. That yes. And so the TLS is the transfer protocol. Is oh. it? No, it's the encryption. Well, TLS, TLS over is TCP, TCP, which you knew this would be the time. I'm trying all day to get on GPT so I could ask one more question. This looks very much like the best. So why is activity pub a networking protocol and rest not? And I guess it's classification. Yeah, I mean it's it's more like it's the it's telling you how it's, to do it. Adjective. It's not a it's not a specification, it's more like a, a guideline. I right. guess specification in not a published kind. Rest, like, rest doesn't define your endpoints, it doesn't define your language, right? Because activity pub does activity pub. At least find some. It, it, it finds a basic endpoint for sure, and you have to use activity stream for it to work. So, to me, that's the difference. Would have been interesting to see what chat team activity so. it uses web finger. Yeah. Oh, oh, hang on. Oh, stop skipping ahead. Oh, you you've you. obviously already read this book. Uh, is activity streams a protocol? No, activity streams is not a protocol. It's an open standard of format a data structure for representing social activities and objects right i can i can use an act i can use activity stream to define the data for a post i can use activity streams to define a a follow or a direct message right and then once i've got it formatted i turn it over to activity pub and activity pub will deliver it so um if we separate out like SMTP, the network connection versus SMTP versus email headers, maybe that's the way to think about it. All right. So yeah, stream is the envelope. Yeah, if you, to be part of this. if you kind of if you look at the activity hub specification, it does a little on activity streams. So if we build email today and we first find our email headers, that's activity streams right and then we define a networking protocol to deliver it to the two addresses cc and bcc you know based on the index record then so that would all be activity pub and alex you can stuff i don't know that, that's too too fancy for me too new school all right activity streams builds upon json ld <laughs> which is JSON based serialization uh, for linked data. Right? So it's like, well, what's that? Well, it's JSON. And these are like a formal specification in JSON on how to link things together. Right? Um, but what we're seeing here is this is part of the semantic web. Right? They're, they're trying to. Uh, you know, instead of like you know, screen scraping a website and getting data off of it, it's a way to kind of publish data <laughs> relationships to make it easy parsable for computers. Right, that, that's kind of the way I understand the semantic web. Right? This is JSON, nothing JSON. Uh, no, it is JSON defining relationships. Right, so. so anyway, Bill, I'll leave it up. I'm just going to, since <coughs> I'm here, they, may say, they may say say something to us here a little bit later. Yes, just uh, like this. Jerry. This is a, uh, a a there we go. Jonathan's one of our guys. Brandon's one of our guys. Graduates. Jerry, your mic's on. Andy Cal worked at Discovery. He's worked a whole bunch of places. Oh, yeah. 
Are they waving? Hey, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. call him. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're getting your audio, Jerry. Okay, I'll turn it down. All right. Uh, now you, you need to <laughs> mute yourself. Ben, can you have him muted? Let me see. There yeah. we go. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so, if you imagine, like, we've got um, a website for Edsa, right? And, and we can take the uh, vector thing on the web, and we can take Wesley's um, LinkedIn page. That's another thing on the web. Then I can use JSON LD to say, you know, like Wesley is a board member of ETSA, right? So we're using that to define a relationship between these two things out on the web. Uh, if you want to think of it easier, it's metadata is tagging, where metadata is standardized. So you can say book or person or location. Yeah. So your objects can lead to other objects. But it can also say this web page is about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I swear to God, that is the official logo for Webfinger, the the West Side gang symbol, right? Or gang sign, right? Uh, but we're going to be using this. Does anybody remember the old school Unix finger commands? Yes, I, I do yeah. by default. Yeah, you can get it. You can get information about another user on the system. Same sort of thing, right? I, I, I never knew about this. Those mm -hmm. are uh, digging into Activity Pub, right? But you can kind of see down here how it's getting a URL slash dot well known slash web thing, right? So that is that's like a defined endpoint. If you want to get uh, a business card of somebody, you can go to that URL. And if it exists, there's a way to get it. Resource equals account. Bob at example.com. Right. I mean, this is, I think this is genius marketing. So I am recommending that we change the logo for email. <laughs> I, this, this is going to be the new logo for email. So, you know, activity pubs kind of like email. Now you can, you can, you, you can express your opinion on this. Uh, and this is this is the web page that talks about these well-known <laughs> URIs, right? So it, it's part. It's an uh, it's an RFC standard. Again, like I don't know that I will ever use any of this, but it seems worth knowing. Like there's a way to bootstrap up these connections, right? And it's through this web finger well-known URL. And their are standards, right? Who made pages of this association? Do what? Who made pages of this association? So, the, so the specifications for the associations um, is the standard, and then any of us can build those associations. So the path I right. and, and put it on our website, and people will be able to use it, right? That's essentially what activity pet is done. So with um, it's masked on all the addresses on a local part. So the domain part is used for You're skipping ahead. Okay. So, <laughs> so question real quick. Uh, yes. And then your research should have said that all was the effects of the name for can it work? Um, like it is, yes, it is slash dot well known. Okay, so it, it'll work on anything. Yeah, it, it'll either work or it doesn't exist. Okay, got it. All right. All right um, so here. You know, I can it's, it's, it's HTTPS. You know, I can go curl the web finger for my VT102 account on WSS, right? And, and here's what you get, right? You get JSON information about my account, right? Um, and you can see like there's a couple of aliases to <coughs> reference me. Uh, there's a couple of links that are different things that it's kind of publishing about me. Uh, in this case, we're gonna look at that second one, uh, the uh, activity, right? Activity, JSON. Uh, we're gonna dig into that a little bit. 
but you can see it's a URL. So I go to the, I go to this, it's like following, you know, I used to spider crawl websites, right? Here's the well-known site. Now that we know this account exists, it's giving me a URL, take the next steps. All right, uh, so in this case, uh, rather than keep writing all this out, I, I took, you know, uh, that first line, so you can see me, uh, this is really not very clear at all, right? I'm doing exactly what I did before. I'm grabbing my account and then using JQ, I'm grabbing the, the second link, right? the first index, href, right? So y'all can't see me point to it, but uh, inside that links, you see the array, zero, one, the second one has got an href element, right? So as I dig further into it, I'm just grabbing whatever it says into that self variable and then echoing self. And you can see, you know, the URL I got. So once I start querying that URL, now I'm digging into, I guess technically this is activity streams, this is a data format, right? So you can see here, uh, I, I've, I've skipped a lot out, right? This is a big thing, right? But uh, in this middle here, you can start to see like uh, type, person. I'm a person, right? This is not a post. This is not a picture. This is not a retreat or whatever. It's referencing a person. Uh, you can get the list of people I'm following, the people who are following me. You can get my inbox and outbox, right? So this, you can see the summary here, uh, you know, Data manually approves followers false. Like this is all the information that Mastodon is choosing to publish about my act. And you know, I, honestly, I don't know half of these. You can get a sense of what's going on here. Uh, here is my outbox. Right. So in this case, I, I took the outbox URL on the previous screen and just ran a uh, curl against it. Uh, and you can see information about my outbox, total items, 444, type, it's got a dedicated ID, it's got a, a context to help define the format of everything in here. Um, I guess that's first and last message, I don't know. Uh, but here, uh, so I, I cut off the URL, shouldn't have done that. Um, I'm guessing I just grabbed first here. Right, uh, but you can see this is my my outbox feed again. I I, I cut out a couple of that's what the little <laughs> Owens there. I cut out some stuff, but you can see right here, right. This is me boosting that post. Right, um, there's the ID of my boost. Right, the type announce. So the activity screen is finding an action in this case, an announce action. Right. Uh, the actor who did it published, right? Uh, if you skip down a little bit, object, right? So I announced that object, right? It is going to uh, the public, the general public, right? And then also I am letting the original poster know and all my followers. So this this data format is how it's handling the actions of the social network. Any questions? So, uh, so, no, no, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I, I got it. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. I'm going to run off. All right. So, this brings us to the Fediverse, right? So, we've got all these things talking to each other. Um, that is essentially the Fediverse. ActivityPub isn't Mastodon. Right, Mastodon uses ActivityPub to, to activate a social networking. But if I've got another server, right, don't, don't think of Mastodon as Twitter. It's just software sending ActivityPub out. Any other ActivityPub speaker can get receive these messages. So uh, one of the things I ran into, like I'm, I'm looking at pictures of painted miniatures, right? I click on one guy. Well, he isn't even on Mastodon. He's on Pixel Fed, which you can think of as an Instagram plug. Like it's 
software designed for sharing photos that uses activity club. And now I'm, I'm getting his post over onto uh, Mastodon. Another guy is uh, using Friendica, which is like a Facebook type of experience. I didn't follow that. No. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just publishing, you know, announcements, right? Activity stuff, social activity type mechanisms. Uh, there's PeerTube, which is uh, like a YouTube, right? I, I didn't even know about bookworm, but I thought that looked interesting. A social network for people who enjoy reading, sort of like a distributed. Um, good reads, thank you. Yeah, all sorts of stuff. You can make your own thing. There's Python, Montevallo, do the activity streams for you. Right? <clears throat> you come in, uh, so this is, uh, you can see the URL right here, fediverse.party. <laughs> So you can come in here and start to look at uh, the different types of software uh, that are in this Fediverse. Now, one interesting point here is if you, you got your category, you got your source code language, but in the middle, you can sort by protocol. You can see activity is not the only one there. Like there are other social networking protocols. Uh, OStatus came out of GNU, uh, and I don't know a whole lot about Zot and Diaspora. I don't know a whole lot about anything, but you know, it, it's interesting to see. Like, we heard about Mastodon, and I heard about Mastodon mostly because Twitter, and like, oh, everyone's going to go Mastodon. But, like, there's other alternatives out there. People have been working on this for a while. The standard is like 10 years old. It, I mean, maybe that's not quite right. It, it's years old and it's built upon O status, my understanding. So, there's a track record behind some of this stuff. All right. How does this stuff work in the real world, right? Uh, hey, look, <laughs> asshole Twitter users are barging into Mastodon demanding it stop being so polite. Um, you know, Mastodon's been around for a few years and it's not a general purpose social media platform like Twitter. It's like a lot of people, you can imagine like communities got fed up with Twitter and they went to their own Mastodon server and they got their you know own rules for five jack and cookies. Uh, but really it's uh, they got their own rules with uh, content warnings and um, I don't know what else like blocking other servers right so you know, it, it, it feels very much to me like you do run into a lot more like marginalized communities like I mentioned like tech L, uh, LGBT right I don't know anything about that site, but I could imagine based on what I've seen with the Fediverse, like, hey, somebody created a Mastodon server for, you know, gay tech people. And this, that's their community, right? Um, and they don't really want to see, you know, anti-gay stuff. So they want servers that are promoting that sort of thing, right? Uh, you can imagine like a community for domestic uh, abuse survivors. So, They've got the ability to put content warnings in there. So you have to click on the content, <laughs> and it says warning, whatever, uh, domestic violence. So they don't get ambushed by the content. You got to click on it and go through, right? Direct eye contact is apparently a trick for a lot of people. Uh, I didn't know, right? But I've run into that a few times. Right? Uh, so, you know, I think you have to understand when you do step into it, like people have been here for a while, they do kind of have their own social norms, and like that's a little different now. Me being on the miniature wargaming uh, community site, like, I don't really run into a lot of that, right? But as you start to explore the Fed versus a little bit, you definitely. All right, so here is the uh, admin for sage.com saying, like, oh my God, Mastodon.social is the biggest Mastodon server out there. He's saying, I don't know anything about it. He's saying, like, it's completely unmoderated. You're seeing all these abusive posts on dice.camp and mastodon.social. He's trying to figure out how to deal with it. Uh, he, he blocked mastodon.social. But there's a lot of people over there, um, you know, that, that you know, it, it, the biggest mastodon server probably, uh, you know, some prominent authors are on there. So that's not really a solution. But mastodon's got two ways to block, like you can. Uh, Silence and suspend, right? So if he suspends Mastodon.social, nothing from Mastodon.social 
comes on his side. So instead, he chose to silence it. So users on the side can't can follow people from Macedon, not socially, but they'll never show up in the federated feed. So this is a big thing, right? Blocking is absolutely a big thing, right? This is a, a GitHub repo. It's like, here's the recommended blocks. Uh, you, you may be familiar with the Gab social network. I get to heard about it. it. You know, it's very explicitly right brain and you know, uh, they started, I think, on Mastodon. But nobody federated it. They all blocked it. Like nobody would connect with these guys, and they'd essentially you know forked it and doing a different protocol now or whatever, right? Uh, yeah, you know, if you kind of get that reputation, you should get blocked by everybody. Does this turn into uh, a Twitter block list of gigantic? Where people just assume that the blocks are, I don't want to say honest, good, but people just can add thousands. It's almost like a no fly list where you're like, why is this person on this list? And you mentioned the give up page. Is that for big? Yeah, no, I don't, this is not a huge site. It's not okay. a huge list. I mean, it's maybe a couple hundred servers, okay, not people, right? So it's not silencing the individual. Whatever, if I go on Twitter, like there's, there's only so many ways I can change my name to be in the new account or whatever, but I can always move to a new Mastodon server or run my own. Like some people talk about creating a singleton Mastodon server. I'm going to create a server for me and federate it out and manage everything that way. I, I don't know if that's a great idea. Uh, Docs are really bad. No, 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 no. Docs are really bad. Docs. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. If I run yeah. yeah. I'm still looking for a setting to keep my server from stopping and identifying itself as one seven dollar one dog goes that is that I set the variable that's supposed to change that it didn't do anything. Right. Uh, so this is an interesting website. Uh, this guy is a diaspora. So I mentioned the alternative protocols. Diaspora, I think, is software and protocol. So he was a developer there. Uh, he's got, I think, a, an in-depth criticism of activity pub, you know, which uh, seems legit. My biggest takeaway is it's like it's a very loose standard. And what the hell point is there in having a loose standard that's designed to interconnect it? Right? I think he's got a point. Uh, again, not an expert here, but here's the activitypub.rocks website. And what you can see across the top, you know, that's all the different software in the Fediverse. And along the left, is the features that they are implementing, right? Uh, you know, so just because you grab some activity pub software and install it, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. You know, you may have to kind of tweak it a little bit. So it's kind of funny that he's sitting there bitching about how it's all different. So I'm just really introducing it across the table. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm <laughs> short on time. Uh, da, 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 da. okay, I forgot to grab a screenshot for this one because I was at a customer website and didn't want to grab it. Uh, <laughs> Stripper Web was apparently the, the number one place, the number one forum for sex workers, right? In, in their community, right? And in, in a similar way, the niche page is like in my community, right? When we think about platform risk, we kind of think about, uh, you know, Elon Musk buying a company and driving them to the ground. But stripper web just shut down. And it had, I mean, I don't know, but you know, the claim was it had you know, decades of historical information that was really valuable to that community. The miniatures page, 30 years of miniatures content. I would hate to see that disappear off the web, right? Um, I, I actually contacted him to offer to buy the sites to make sure that didn't happen, not to patch. Bash CGI scripts, but uh, you know, I, I don't want to lose that. With Mastodon, at least, like I've got the ability to back up all my content, right? It's got an API, I can mirror other people's content that I want. Right. So it doesn't fully remove platform risk, right? But loads it. That's my take on it. <clears throat> and look, everybody's going over to Mastodon. Everybody's leaving Twitter and going to Mastodon. Two, this is December. 2 million people, uh, 2.5 million people uh, moved over to Mastodon. 
oh well, out of whatever, you know, 250 to 350 million Twitter users. So yeah, maybe one percent moved over to Mastodon based on those numbers. And you know, as you might expect. Mastodon not giving a familiar experience. I think a lot of those people didn't think that. Right. Yeah. When, when, when the first question on somebody's, they want to use Mastodon, it's like, where do I go? Where do you want to go? Right. You know, just go find the server. Yeah. Well, I think well, the onboarding experience needs some work. Yeah. There are, I mean, I, yeah. it, 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 it's not very sexy. It's just not something you want to look at. Yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Pretty much that's very sexy. Uh, well, yeah, it's Twitter, particularly. Uh, but well, Facebook's very user friendly, very interesting. Uh, all of them. So, you yeah. can't people's kidding. Uh, you know, it's, it's just much better users. What do you think Twitter does? I, I don't think. Well, I mean, you've got to do the same thing here, right? It, it, you can, you can, well, it's, it's got to take the other. I can build a. So I mean, there's a client, 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 my aunt, and we kind of yeah. think it's not in the building. Yeah. She can go to Oh, no, but you can go, you know, I've got like two different apps I pulled out of there. Yeah. And so here. Yeah. yeah, but he's trying to say, yeah, yeah. it's my interpretation of this, like, this is trying to say, it's dangerous. I totally understand what they mean that. Like the standard, right? Yeah, yeah the, the onboarding. Is the onboarding for sure is different. That is intentional. That is absolutely one hundred percent intentional, right? Uh, I mean, I, I had to come I, to a one-hour talk to learn how to make an account. Tonight. I <laughs> I thought I had something, but I mean, the thing to take place like uh, I had it, I had it presented slide, but Mastodon is kind of presented as a Twitter alternative. It is not really. by intention. Uh, it was not built to be Twitter. It was built to give people the ability to create their own communities. Uh, and because of that, yeah, you have to kind of find a server to get on. You may have to do some blocking or whatever, right? But it, it is absolutely by intention, not meant to be a Twitter replacement. It is Twitter like with different goals. And, you know, it, it's certainly not going to be Twitter. Think about the value of a social network being the, the number of users. Like, it, it's not a place to Twitter. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's interesting. It's got an open protocol for connecting these things that can be used for other purposes, right? And, uh, you know, I like it. I found my own little community. It feels like that the old place I had. I like it. So, uh, you found your own little community? Yes. You like, real miniature. <laughs> I think if we uh, we consider the scale between Twitter and my community, it's like the one three thousand new battleships that are this long. What the guy say about you trying to mount this out? I mean, this was years ago. He just said he wasn't interested. Yeah. You got a guy whose header has a picture of Sardos head. Probably his own boy. Yes. Yes. It's not. Yes. I mean, he's he's a he's an old old school mother. Yeah. All right, any questions? That, that's there good. Does. You mentioned, um, could you, should, could you get us, give us an example of what the funky eye looks like since you're running this back? Because as I mentioned, you use user friendly as the funky eye, and he's not running the funky eye. He's running the power user when it's based on some feedback. I have no oh, idea. Oh, that's why that looks good. I have no idea how to do that, Eric. I don't remember what I did. Advanced web interface at checkbox. Where? Right there. Uh -huh. So, and then if you go back, this is the normal way it works. There we go. Oh, now it looks like Facebook made it. <laughs> the multiple columns is um, based on something really popular. In, like, the this is much more what the average user would see. Yeah, and, and some, and some of you. Yeah. And again, there's, you know, it, it's open. There's a dozen yeah. different apps. They all kind of look like a professional social. It's also different just from apps. It's like, oh, that, that one's pretty cool. They want to call it the social. Yes. You can authorize it with your account. You just use that as your kind of. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. That's, you know, that's also a question. I have six 
black channels on the far left. About nine distances. And a lot of them are very parallel. And you were talking about at the start how you were like finding something more specific at a jump, which is really great because you can follow and see what people are posting. But at what point do you hit this point of scrawl? You're like, uh, it's like, at what point does it become subscribing to Disney Plus and Netflix and who and like 12 others? So I haven't felt that right because I'm mostly, you know, I'm in my home feed. These are the people I have nothing to follow because I'm interested in the content, right? So it doesn't do it to scroll. Um, you know, it's not an algorithm feed, it's a chronological feed of the people I want to listen to. So it doesn't feel that way. You get over into the federated feed, and it's just, you know, it is more like the, it, it's not, but it, it feels more like Twitter. It's just like shit, you know, it's just coming at you. <laughs> and you, you sit there and stream it on some of the busier servers, like uh, WSS is not particularly busy. Uh, but if I get over an AWS community, which is about, uh, you know, an order of magnitude larger, like that, you sit there and watch the federated feed, you know, chug along as those inputs come in. And I have used Mastodon social because they shut down. Um, and they, remember, no, they uh, stopped new users. Stop. But I understand like it's better to keep just using the same system. Yeah. You, but, you, you know, there, there's, there's pros and cons about all this. Like, all of these are just people running their own server, right? And that gets kind of expensive, right? When you start getting a lot of users. Uh, so, and you got to manage it or pay somebody to host it for you. So, you know. Whereas I can, you know, grandma can just download Twitter and she's in. You know, I, that's, that's not the experience of Mastodon. Yeah, you want to spend too much on like, AWS, which is really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like uh, I've reached out to the editor, uh, to, the, to the owner of WSS a couple times, and I think you got that. Like, I don't know what that means. Like, I, at some point, I may fall off the earth and may. It start costing him two hundred dollars a month, and he's like, "I'm out," you know. Yeah, well, but but I can back up. It's like I can save my stuff, move somewhere else. I'm assuming you can watch one of these on the on the web, right? You can, but federation relies on the actual testable. That 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 one you can run it on. Like for for you could federate with probably other onion servers, I would imagine. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Disney. You're awesome. Yeah, you could run one of you could run twenty of the labs, which, which I would do. And tell friends, and make sure you set up a separate relay. What you could do is you could run a like secondary <laughs> over like an, an onion in service, and your end users could reach out. But communication with other services that are not on, with other instances that are not on onion services, you still have to go through and know. Or to some other time. Okay. Um, you could, in theory, build a federation of the entire space on um, when a server communicates with a server, communicates a, a well known, I could say, backlink, and if that's an onion, if it's on that onion, that other server would need to be able to resolve the dot onion address and communicate with the party. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know if you, you don't have to do that. Uh, Twitter's removed all content moderation, and there's you can go to Twitter now. You don't have to go to you have your ADSP. <laughs> do what? You have to what's your ADSP? ADSP. Oh, I can't find it. Uh, okay. I was amusing. I don't know. Oh, oh yes. So somebody was publishing. Yeah. yeah. So positions of aircraft, public information, public safety. Yeah. And, and, um, and Elon Musk, the free speech absolute. Yeah. <laughs> ban somebody for tracking and posting public information. information. And what's even worse is child you pornography posting on Twitter all day, day long. The the just it's just over just over over over. It's it's just, I mean, it's go read the news. news. Like, it's not uh, saying we're, we're dipping into the danger territory. But don't forget, free speech doesn't allow you to scream fire. That's a common misconception. That is, you could do it. Too. Basically, yeah, basically, yeah, I'm stopping this recording right now. Where did he now? Thank you for joining us. <laughs>